Imagine in the offline world, imagine you have a, a store where you are able to look at people you know, walking on the street, looking at the window of your uh, shop, and looking at you know, what are the characteristics of those people? Why are some people coming in the store and some people not coming in? Why are uh, how people interact in the store, what they are looking at, how they walk in the hallways, uh, in the uh, looking at different products, uh, may, maybe picking something, looking at it, and putting it back on the shelf, um, even putting stuff in their cart, and eventually abandoning the cart and not purchasing anything. So in the offline world, doing something like this would be you know, fairly difficult and expensive and would be time consuming. In the online world, we have the, we're lucky because we have a, a, a constant environment where we can watch, learn, and adjust and improve our business to better answer the needs of our customers. So this, in a way, is the essence of what is digital analytics, is to understand where people are coming from, what are their characteristics, what are they doing on, on our website, and whether it works for them and it works for us, because we want to have a successful business. So in the past, just as a side note, in the past we were talking about web analytics because it was very, very uh, focused on websites and it was heavily geared toward marketing. And now we're talking about digital analytics. So we've broadened the scope. And when we talk about digital analytics, we talk about websites, of course, but we also talk about mobile application. We talk about the Internet of Things, where we can measure any type of device and collect data about whether it's working or it's not working. And we've broadened the scope from a business perspective because we're thinking about marketing, but we're also expanding to every business function. Uh, we're looking at sales, we're looking at customer support, we're even looking at uh, HR because most websites have a way of contacting to apply for a job, for example. So we've broadened the scope from web analytics to digital analytics. So what do we want to learn? We want to have some, some very uh, uh, important understanding of what it is to be an analyst, what it is to do digital analytics. Uh, we want to understand what is the context of the business and how being creative is also an important part of the analyst role. We want to understand how we evolved from looking at simple reports up to today where the landscape is, is very complex, uh, very rich, and there's virtually no limit to, to what we can do. So why digital analytics? So I just alerted to the physical store, uh, but uh, one of the element is the, the, ex the, despite all of the experience that you might have, it is very uh, useful, it is valuable, but it doesn't scale. So your experience is, is your own carrier path and you can't easily tell other people, you know, here's everything I've learned. So through digital analytics, we can more easily expand the capabilities of understanding how things are working. Um, assumptions, uh, you, you, have, you can make an assumption and it might be very, very valuable. It might be very plausible that, yes, I think doing this on the website would be better for our customers and, and better for our business. But until you, you actually test it, until you actually make the change, there's no way to be sure that's effectively better than the other alternative. So assumptions are good, but we want to go in uh, uh, at a, a pace where things are moving so quickly that we have to adapt and we have to evolve very quickly. And, and last is faith. Uh, faith is, yeah, we can believe that something is so good. We can believe that the latest technology and the latest trend is so awesome. But at the same time, uh, we have our own bias. We are biased in so many ways because of our experience, because of our culture, because of uh, the, the previous jobs that we had in the past and, and so many reasons. So 
uh, through digital analytics, we remove, in a way, uh, this bias that we have. So those are you know, three aspects of why you should go for digital analytics. Experience that doesn't scale, assumptions that can't be proven until you actually do it, and, and faith and bias that we have that we want to get, put that aside and go with something that really works. So continuing on why do we want to do digital analytics? In, in today's environment, we have a tremendous amount of data. Data is coming from everywhere. It's coming from your website. It's coming from your mobile application. It's coming from your own business systems like customer relationship management, CRM systems. It's coming from sales. It's coming from competitors. It's coming from all over the place. So the problem is not having a large amount of data because we usually have more than we need. Uh, but we want to extract information out of it. Information is being able to understand the meaning of the data. But once we have information, what do we do with it? We want to transform it into knowledge. Knowledge is understanding the context of the data and the context of the information we have. So we know that, for example, if, we, if I have a piece of data that says 99.9, Okay, that's a piece of, of data that I have, but uh, what does it mean? Information might be that 99.9 .9 is the percentage of successful transactions. So there's a little number of transactions that actually doesn't go through, through my systems. And there are errors and stuff. Knowledge might be that understanding that because I'm in a banking environment, 99.9 .9 is actually below the threshold of acceptable transactions that I should process at every time. So in most uh, environment, you will see uh, targets of being able to, to process every transaction, transaction with a very, very little amount of error. So 99 point maybe 99.95. So I'm a, just a little bit below my threshold. This is knowledge. I know because of the environment that I'm in, I know because of the target that I have that I need to do something. And wisdom is actually being able to act on that information. Now that I know, what can I do with it? I need to investigate. I need to find where the problem is. I need to be creative and find different alternatives to try to go from 99.9 .9 success to my target of 99.95 percent of success. Okay? So going from data up to acting on the data. This is critical in the role the analyst is going to play. So it's, if you don't want, we, uh, sometimes we hear the term reporting monkey. Reporting monkey is, is pretty negative. You know, it basically means that yes, you are able to extract the data you might be able to turn it into information in the form of reports, but you don't bring the knowledge. So you don't want to be a reporting monkey, right? So, you know, being a teacher and being in the field for so many years, uh, I looked at how people define what is analytics. And, you know, simply put, analytics is the science of analysis. Okay, what is analysis? Analysis is, it really relates to a science. It's how we break something complex into small parts, little chunks, so that we can understand how they work individually. And if we understand how they work individually, we can measure them and we can optimize them. So this is really what is analysis, breaking something complex into smaller parts so that we can understand it and therefore we can optimize. So again, what is analytics? The science of analysis. That's a very simple definition, right? But after asking you know, fellow uh, colleagues and other consultants and practitioners and uh, a lot of people, basically, um, I realized that there were no good definition of what is analytics. So I decided to come up with a definition I, I think can hold water very easily. So I define analytics as being how an organization arrives at an optimal and realistic decision informed by data. Every single word is important here. How 
an organiza organization might be a company, a private uh, company. It might be, you know, publicly traded. It might be government, nonprofit. So it's an organization. So it applies to any type of environment. Um, how you do something implies there's a process. There's a way to do it. There's some kind of recipe that you can follow to get to a success. The optimal and realistic is really important because it plays on the ability of the digital analyst to be, to be creative, to, to find the balance between what would be the best solution if there were no constraints, if there, if there were no limits to what I can do, no constraints of budgets, no constraints of politics maybe, no constraints of the legal and ethical environment, and I could do anything. So this would be the optimal. But Realistically, there are a number of things that I need to consider. So I need to find a balance between what would be the best solution and what realistically I can do. And, and this also is key for the digital analyst because oftentimes analysts will make recommendations that don't go anywhere. And the reason for that, you, very often, the reason is simply that analysts are not able to make recommendations that are both optimal and realistic. So we need to find a balance. And informed decision implies action, and informed by data implies that uh, there's still, we still leave room for the uh, human brain to make a decision, to leverage their own expertise, experience, and other, other uh, elements that come into play when you have to make a decision. So that's why we say it's informed. It's not automatically done with the data. Later on, we're gonna talk about automations and stuff like that. Basically, what happened is we delegate that responsibility and we automate the process. But at the beginning, there's still a, a, an informed decision to do it, right? There are three essential elements that we need. I mentioned the banking environment, the financial environment. So we need to understand the context of the business. We, ha we need to have data, right? And on top of that, we need to be creative. So there's a lot of room for creativity in what we do. Being creative, creative is, is the ability to go beyond the obvious. It's the ability to go beyond the, here's the top 10 things that you should do and, be, and go beyond that, you, you be much better than that. Being creative is being able to do better than your competitor because it's easy to look at a competitor and say, oh, we're gonna do the same. No, you don't want to do the same. You want to do better than that. So context, data, and creativity are the three important elements that will allow us to do our analytics. At the core of the analyst role, when you think of it, we are essentially change agents. We bring change to the organization. And that's why we make recommendations. Uh, we push for change. And sometimes, yes, it might be difficult. But again, going back to the definition of uh, what is analytics, we need to balance the optimal and the realistic. So if we, we are good change agents, we're gonna be able to make recommendations that, that get acted on, right? And being a change agent means that sometimes it won't work. It will take time. It, it will imply you know, uh, facing you know, changes uh, about status quo. We want things to change. We want to improve things. We want to take risks. If we don't take any risks, nothing is gonna change. The big difference that I've seen between an analyst and a manager is essentially that the analyst has a power of recommendation, but the manager has a power of decision. So in, in, in the future, we're gonna see more managers who are more data savvy and data driven or data informed. And we're gonna see that they have both the skills to be really leveraging data in all contexts of the business, but also make the decisions. And in the analyst role, you make recommendation, but you typically don't make the decision except in the uh, scope of what you are responsible for. So for example, if you are responsible to optimize AdWords campaigns on Google, 
on Google Search, uh, you've been delegated that responsibility and you are you, you make the improvement, you make the measurement, and you make the decision to reallocate the budgets and optimize those campaigns because that power of decision has been delegated to you. But typically, uh, when we go beyond those boundaries, we have a power of recommendation, no power of decision. So, is it hard or easy? That has been a debate for the past 10 years. Um, I would say, you know, it's, it's really easy to start. It's really affordable to start. There are free solutions that you can use and get going very easily. Um, the key to make it easier is to work on the thing that you can manage, that you can control, and that you can influence. And we're going to talk more about those things. Manage, control, and influence. This is how you're going to keep your work interesting and easy. And in the next lesson, we're going to talk about the concept of maturity. So we're finding out what are our strengths and weaknesses. And based on that, develop a roadmap that will be optimal and realistic so that we can do better digital analytics. So in this lesson, um, we've looked at some very important aspects to get going. And we're going to deep dive into each of those aspects a little more in the upcoming lessons. We need context, we need data, and we need to be creative. We need to understand how we can break something complex into smaller parts so that we can understand it and we can optimize it. We need to understand also that we went from web analytics, web focus and marketing centric to digital analytics where we can leverage any data we have and we can basically optimize any aspect of the business given we understand the context and we can leverage the data. We also um, want to emphasize the importance of working, especially when you're starting in the field, work on the things that you can control, manage, and influence. And lastly, doing a maturity assessment will allow you to identify your strengths and weaknesses and develop a roadmap that will work for you uh, over the next six month, year, and then repeat the process of uh, assessing your maturity and adjusting the roadmap accordingly. Hey, want to become an expert in digital marketing? Then subscribe to the Simple Learn channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in digital marketing, click here.